Hi guys, we are back with another one and this time we are taking a look at gearing and basically going over the ins and outs explaining what to do, how to do it and why to do it from season to endgame. So uh, let's jump straight into it. Um, we've been putting together this infograph for a couple of uh, weeks now. Um, it's been out, you can check it out on my Twitch, exclamation mark path in uh, the channel should give you the link to this document right now. It's also posted in my Discord, so um, go and join that one and you can find all this info always. But I get a lot of questions about it and for good reasons. Now there's just no way that you can get all the ins and outs, uh, all the variables and, and everything into a picture. Um, so obviously this is not correct for every class, every playstyle and everything. And that's why we have this beautiful disclaimer right at the top. Um, and today we're going to go over those variances, those differences, what might be correct for you. And also explaining how you make those decisions yourself to figure out what route you should be going. Um, the route I have here in this picture, the path... Um, I think is usable for the most amount of people, the most classes and everything. Um, but obviously there's going to be some classes that should do it slightly differently and also depending on play styles. But uh, let's take a look. So um, we're gonna assume that you've been playing on season. If you're a new player, uh, you should definitely play on season. Um, goes for anyone, whenever you're watching this video, <laughs> even a year from now, um, Make a seasoned character if you're just starting out. A lot of the times, even players that have played for a long time want to make a seasoned character because it is that good. So, at the end of the season, you should be aiming to have full pen to Valor. Um, now, number one step, full pen to Valor. However, the boots can be tet, and there's a reason for that. Because, you'll see down step three, the very first thing you want to do off season is change the boots. But we'll get into that. So, full pen to Valor. That should be a priority when playing on this season server. Now, with the accessories, it's a bit different. You will get a pin ring from getting level 60. You'll get a pin earring from 61. So you don't have to make those. Um, the other stuff here, depending if you have the Kaposha variant, then you won't have to make those a pin either. So you can save a lot of resources um, and if you're joining the season with a week left or two weeks left, then you might want to skip on upgrading stuff. You don't have to, to be able to get the, the important items to pin by season end. So look around and figure out if you have some Kaposha. There's events that give you Kaposha stuff. You get uh, Kaposha from hitting 61 and 62. And also you can choose a pin Kaposha at the end of the season. So, step two, the season ends, you get to choose your pen Kaposha accessory. Currently, you can choose between three things. There's the season one reward, which is the ring or the earring. Don't choose the earring. <laughs> it's very simple. You don't choose the earring, it's very bad. Um, so currently, you can choose between the ring or the belt. Now, how do you decide which one to choose? Um, potentially in the future, there will be a neck, a pen Kaposha neck you can choose as well. So if you are watching this in the, the future and there's more options, this is how you decide. So to find out which uh, item to choose as your end of season pin Kaposha reward, um, basically you're just going to open up your marketplace and you're going to be looking for either the crescents and we're going to check the price of said crescent. The current price right now is around 4.5 billion silver. And the alternative is going to be the Bassy Belt, which is priced at around 2.7 billion, 2.8 billion at the moment. So if, the change, if there's a change in price in the future, you can just go in game, check out the marketplace, and you choose the more expensive option. And in this case, I would choose the Pen Kaposha Ring. When you graduate as well, you get to choose um, one item to turn into a boss item. You get to keep all your Tovala, and you can use that on a non-season character as the season ends. But you can also turn one of your pen Tovala items into an actual boss piece. The only thing is, you cannot sell that item, but it works completely normal other than that. 
So what should you choose? Another very common question. And there is, you, you can't really go wrong except the boots. Don't choose the boots. Everything else is actually fine in, in its own way. Now, I suggest you choose a weapon. What do you gain from choosing and making one of your pizzas into a boss? Well, you can put Kafras into it. And while putting Kafras into a Tet armor is worth it and good, and it will happen in my gear path as well, I think for the most part, you are going to get more bang for your box by having the ability to hit some AP brackets with the Kafras. If you're awakening, choose to make your awakening weapon into a boss piece. And if you're a succession, um, choose the main hand. Right. So season is over. You're done. You graduated. You changed the gear around. We're happy. What is the first thing to do? Well, without a doubt, and there's no exception for all classes, all specs, all play styles, the number one item to get is Ted Oregon boots. And very important here, the Tuvala boots are not Oregons. If you use your uh, bus exchange coupon on the boots, you get Muskin boots. So the only way you can do this is by either making them yourself, getting a, a base pair or enhanced pair, enhance them up yourself, or just buy uh, a pair of Ted Oregons. And whichever one works, works. But that is the number one priority to get when the season is over for you. Now, why is that? Um, without going into two months, you'll just get the TLDR version. Um, at Chet level, which basically Pentavala is the equivalent of Chet bus gear. At this gear level, DR, which is Oregon's and Bex, scale exceptionally well. And Muskin's levers, which is the evasion version, but especially the Muskin boots, they give you evasion. But at this gear level, you do not have enough evasion for it to work, really. Um, you are going to be taking significantly more damage in PvE at Ted gear if you're using Muskin's. It's literally night and day. This might be the single biggest noticeable upgrade you will ever get in playing video. I'm talking bigger than getting a pin black style weapon and everything. This is the upgrade where you really notice the difference. Um, so there is just, there's no ifs and buts. Number one priority. After this, um, you're looking to basically upgrade your accessories. Um, you're looking to get uh, Ted Crescent rings or belts uh, for the basketball belt, right? Depending on what you choose. But you're looking to make sure you get um, full set accessories. And the order you should do it is get the cheap stuff out of the way. Um, so currently the belts are very cheap. So I know I have the pen Kaposha belt here. You should probably be looking at buying a Ted Bassi belt or a Ted Volterra belt and using um, a pen Kaposha ring. Um, so here we go, right? Depending on what season reward you choose, easy. Um, after this, again, full Ted accessories. You wanna get the, the necklace. Uh, next and the earrings is the exception so in my opinion it is not worth swapping away from either your Kaposha earrings or your, your Pentovala earrings it's the same um, because of the cost per stat it is the worst of any AP gain you're going to be making right now and you can do it getting Ted um, Tongue earrings but I don't think it's worth it and you'll be able to hit like the important AP brackets without buying them. Basically just saving that money until you are at a point in the gearing where you can go for the, the real uh, earring upgrade which is Chet Distortion Earrings. But Another it's a question I get quite often is when should I be doing my journals? And there isn't a fully 100% correct answer to that. I think for the most part, you get the most value out of your time spent at around this point, when you're having your full set accessories and the next big upgrade is going to be a pin item. That's a massive step up from set accessories. Um, so I think at this point, it's probably a very good idea to finish off your journals, but potentially you've already done some or you don't have the time or effort to do all of them at once. And you basically just get as much done as you can. There's nothing wrong with spreading it out over a couple of weeks. 
but eventually you will want to have all your AP and DP journals completed. I'm going to link um, a guide into the description as well, um, basically going through all the different journals and how to complete them. So get them done. They're very good and not to be underestimated. Nothing really controversial here. Uh, after your full set accessories, you're looking to get um, your first pen item, which would be a weapon. If you are awakening, you want to get the pen dander. If you are succession, you are looking to get a pen main hand. Um, should I get a Chet Blackstar main hand for succession, or should I get uh, often? Um, while there are cases where I can definitely make a case for, for pen often, it's very niche, and the accuracy you get on the Saka is super valuable and very strong. Um, so I, I wouldn't suggest it. There are very niche cases, but that's more in like in-game building where you can definitely make a case for often being uh, the better option. But for 99% of players, just go with the Saka. It's the best all around. Now, why not the Black Star? While the Black Star is technically better, in PvE, uh, having a Saka main hand gives you way more options at hitting AP brackets. And depending on where you are in AP, you only hit, need to hit like one or two AP brackets with a few Kaffirs into your weapon before even in PvE, uh, the Saka has more damage. Um, so long term and just fiddling around with the numbers and everything, you're just better off uh, having the flexibility of using Kaffirs in your primary weapon. Um, same goes for Awakening. Now that there is uh, Ted Blackstar Awakening in the game, the same thing is the case. Having the uh, the Dender allowing on your your, main, your priority weapon allows you more flexibility in hitting important brackets, and it's going to be all around better. It will definitely be stronger in PvP, and at worst, it's only going to be slightly uh, weaker in PvE. Uh, and you can make it stronger in, in PvE as well. So that's what I think. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not good, right? If that's what you have, if you already have it, if that's what you really want because it looks dope, <laughs> don't get me wrong, it looks amazing. And if that is what you want, sure. It's not bad, it's just not the best. Um, I think the flexibility of the Kaffirs wins out. Um, but it's not wrong getting the, the Black Stars. Now, um, next up here, right? If you are Awakening, you get your Pendanta, and then I do think you want uh, a Ted Blackstar on your main hand. Now, if you're Succession, it's different. You want your Pen Saka on your main hand, and you do not touch your Awakening weapon. You have your Pen Kaposha, or even a Ted Kaposha, totally fine. At real endgame, because of how damage works from using your main hand's abilities, and then getting the bonus damage from your awakenings and vice versa. The best is actually a tri dand C19 for succession um, because of the accuracy applying 100% and sheet damage only applying 30%. So don't worry about your awakening at all if you are playing succession. Um, right. After this, after you got your weapons down, you are looking to work on DP. And there's a very good reason for that. Uh, at this stage with your AP, you can grind more of the in-game spots, such as uh, Star Ascent. You're going to be crushing it at this point. Um, and also opening up to grind Sakrya and the new Elvia Realm spots. And they hurt a bit more. So you do want to get some DP uh, now. You don't want to really be uh, worrying too much more about AP. You're hitting those 269 AP brackets. Speaking of brackets, so... Real quick, um, I'm going to link this one in the description as well. Now, this is all the, the AP brackets and DP brackets. And a lot of the gear building is focused around hitting those brackets um, for like maximum gains. And the most important brackets in this game, because they're the biggest ones, um, is the 257, 261, 265, and 269. Those three brackets are like the golden brackets to hit. And each one of those is a massive uh, damage gain. Now, after 269, it's, it's one of the smallest brackets in the game at 273. Um, but hitting these are going to unlock a lot of damage potential in PvE and PvP. Right. 
So with this gear, we are actually hitting both the 269 brackets. Um, if you're a succession, again, your uh, awakening AP bracket is irrelevant. It does not work on succession. Um, so you're only focused about your main hand damage. Right, so we're getting some DP here. Um, the advantages of getting pen armors is putting Kafras into them. It's going to give you a lot of easy stat gains. Um, so as soon as you get a pen armor, you want to get it C4, potentially even Kafra level 6 right away. Um, so that's what we're doing here. After this, we are looking to get uh, a Vel's Heart. At this point, we have pretty decent um, DP. We can grind some of the harder spots, and we hit some, some good DP brackets. Uh, now, you can get a Vel's Heart here. You don't have to. Um, you can also uh, work on more DP. You'll see the next step. Uh, but now is probably a good time to, to get your Vel's Heart. I think now is a good time to also be looking around for a Garmouth Heart upgrade on your weapons. At this point here, you have a very big choice to make, a big decision to make. Um, and that is which armor route are you going to go? So there's basically two different um, gear path things in this game. It's DR and evasion. Um, and there's currently advantages and disadvantages of both. But for the most part, for 99% of players, evasion is still the way to go. Now, the pros and cons of evasion and DR, basically, evasion is way more tanky when you get into the, the pin gearing. So it doesn't really work at set, but when you get into pin, because it scales linearly, it just becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And after 310 DR, with everything included, DR falls off super hard and basically has horrible scaling after that. Uh, and this is around that area into the pin gear when you start hitting those two intersections where evasion gear just keeps getting stronger and DR gear falls off hard. So the way you do it, the way you transition from your TET DR gear to a pin evasion gear is by getting the chest first. It's a clear upgrade. It's the same for both builds, so you will lose nothing. Now, when you're going from your DR gear, you don't want to tank too much DR at once. So you get your chest first. Next up is the gloves. Very important. Chest, gloves. And then when you make a swap to the helmet, uh, which is the third item, you can get uh, the boots um, and sell your old boots. And selling a pair of Ted Oregons should be be enough money to also buy a pin uh, Heave, Fortuna, or Hercules helmet. They're all three the same, so which one, everyone is cheapest on the market. So that's a way of doing it, so you could swap both your boots and your helmet at the same time. If you don't uh, have the option to do that, I would say get chest, gloves, helmet, boots. In that order. Uh, and make sure you get Kaffir levels on the way. So no reason to swap into a pin item without focusing on some Kaffirs for that. You're looking to also then transition your earrings now. When you're getting your first couple of pieces of pin gear and cafe levels in it, you have enough DP to switch out an earring. So I would say one pin armor, one tit distortion. Second pin armor, second pin distortion. Um, it's going to give you a lot of value. And the DP you gain on a pin armor is way more than the DP you lose getting the distortion earrings. Um, there's way more hidden stats on pin armors, and there's it's just five, uh, four DR you're losing on the earrings, and you will have plenty of that um, when you're getting your pin armors. Right. So here is one of the big cases where I get a lot of questions. Um, a lot of people seem to think that the new meta is damage reduction gear, DR gear. Um, and there is some validity to that, but it's a very, again, niche case. So the case where DR can be argued to actually be better um, is in super end game when we're talking C20 armors, we're talking 300 plus AP uh, with accuracy accessories in those kind of settings. And then also on top of that in a seats environment. So when we're talking large scale, 100 versus 100, in-game node wars, sieging, 
and very high gear on top of that, yes, there is a case to be made. The tankiness of evasion is not going to shine through when you got 50, 60 people hitting you. So the value of evasion kind of disappears. Um, and then there's the other pros of DR, um, such as being able to get more damage, um, more resistance and stuff like that, where you might as well just use that instead. Um, but again, this is very niche cases. And because a lot of uh, streamers and content creators that are very high geared have been making the swap, there's unfortunately an idea going around that that is the right thing for everyone. And it most definitely is not. Um, so unless you are one of the cases where your playstyle um, don't really care about being tank, you want to be a glass cannon, um, then you could go for pin DR gear here. Um, but for most players, the tankiness is super valuable. And you might think that being a glass cannon is fun, uh, but not all classes and playstyles can pull it off. Um, some of the classes, however, where I think you should always go DR because you're never actually going to be tanky uh, are classes like Ranger, Archer, and DK. Um, and I think Valkyrie can be thrown in there, not because of the tankiness, but because it's like the best resistant build class in the game. And if you're going DR, you can make up uh, an easier resistance build. But it's a very niche run as well, um, so that's one of those depending on playstyle. Um, there's also some classes that should always go evasion in my opinion and that's classes like striker and mystic um, I would say ninja as well and um, but again there are some pla some players that really like playing the glass cannon style but those evasion classes get so much value out of being evasion and with the introduction of the distortion earrings you can still get very high AP and you'll still do damage, <laughs> so you're not really losing out on that much. Right, so moving on. You're, you're going to get your Ted Distos. Um, after this, you are looking to getting a Pen Kudum. And if you're going Dia, you're looking to get a Pen Nuvo. But again, I suggest for the most players, uh, Evasion Build. Now, the reason you want to get your Offhand as pretty much the last Pen item is because of the Kefirs. It gives you on its own the least amount of stats of any pin item, but on top of that, it is also the last pin item you actually want to put Kefir stones into. And getting those Kefir level four, six, uh, et cetera, on items are super cheap compared to getting pin items. So it's a very expensive upgrade getting a pin piece, but then you're rewarded with relatively cheap and easy uh, stat gains after that with the first couple of Kaffir levels, except on your offhand. They're very expensive, um, and you, it's not something you're going to be going for until you're already full pin C9, etc., etc. So get your offhand pin last. The first item you're going to be pushing for a C10 and putting more Kaffir's level in is your chest piece. You want to aim for a C10, uh, either Dim Tree or Red Nose, um, so you can exchange it for a Fallen Guard. And after this, it's basically just finishing up your build. Now, some of these items you probably won't need when you're watching this video because um, they are adding the new journals, they are adding uh, a permanent buff with an AP DP. So what you're really looking for is hitting around these numbers. Now, if you're a succession, uh, you might need a few more Kaffir levels into your main hand to hit the 289, etc, etc. But again, when you're building and finishing off your build, you might be able to skip on the Tonk Red accessories, you might be able to skip on um, some of the Kaffir levels, or potentially you want to get just one more Kaffir level for an AP bracket. And again, those AP brackets you're looking for are these over here. So hitting the, the 289, the 285, potentially the 293, it's like very good and strong brackets to hit. Also over at the DP. So the path I have here, we're hitting 265 DP, which is exactly 24% damage reduction. That's pretty much it. I hope this was useful. Uh, don't forget to tune in to my Twits at Twits Biceptions Prime. 
or I'm streaming several times a week. And if you have any questions, you can always ask and we'll take a look at your case specifically. See you in the next one.